Back in Chapter 1, we spent a little bit of time talking about some good programming style tips, things that make your program easier to, for other people to read and certainly easier for me to grade. And for the most part, you've all done a really good job at having good programming style. But every now and then, I see some bad habits creeping in. So we're going to just review some good programming style tips. So tip number one is if you're going to import anything, import your modules at the top of the code just underneath your comment block. Tip number two, the constants should go right under any import statements and constants should be in all uppercase. So this isn't a requirement but it's good programming style so it's one of those conventions that programmers look for. So put your constants in all uppercase. Variables, global variables can be next to constants but they would not be in uppercase. Tip number three is to organize your program into sections. So you start with your comment block. You can have your import statements, your constants and global variables, then all of your functions, and then finally your function call. So organizing your program is going to make it easier for you to find things and for other people to look at your code. So tip number four, once again, is group your functions together. We've talked about helper functions and the main function. So you should group all of your helper functions together and have one main function and it should be the last one. That's just going to make it easier to find. If everybody does it in the same place, then we'll all know where to look for your main function. And then tip number five, this is the one that I see um, being broken the most, is have one blank line separating your functions. So you shouldn't have more than one and you should have at least one. If you don't have a blank line and things get squished together, it's a lot harder to recognize when one function ends and another one begins. So that one blank line is just like when you paragraph something in English and you either indent it or you have a blank line to separate so you know when one paragraph ends and the next one starts. So blank lines, just one, is really going to increase your readability. And then just a final tip is to test your program before you turn it in. You should come up with your own test data, but oftentimes I give you some test data. Whenever you see a sample output, that's some test data. So um, you test your program. Be a good tester before you turn it in. Okay, let's take a look at an example. I'm going to show you some code that is, has bad programming style, and we're going to fix it up to good programming style. So here I've opened up a program that works. When you run it, you'll see that it works but it doesn't follow very good programming style. It's just kind of a mess. So if you're going to try and read it to see what's happening, it's just kind of all over the place, not very good programming style. So I've listed the tips over here, and let's just go through each of them. So import modules at the top. So I have one right here, and it's not at the top. So let's go ahead and move it, and it should be right underneath our comment block. So that looks better already. Our constants should go right underneath this. This particular program doesn't have any constants, but I do have some global variables. So I'm going to put all the global variables together, and they are not going to be capitalized, but realize that we're still going to be using some good style. If I kind of scroll through here, oh, a global variable kind of got put in the middle there for whatever reason. Uh, it's like if you're programming and suddenly you decide, oh, I need a variable, and you can put it wherever you want. It, the program will run, but it's not very good style. So now I've got them kind of grouped together. It's easier for me to know what were my global variables, what did I call them, what are the initial values. They're all right there, easy for everybody to find. Now I'm going to organize everything to sections. So I have my comment block, I have my imports, I have my global variables. Now I want all of my helper functions. So I might even add in a comment that says something like helper functions. So remember these are the functions that the main function will call. So it's going to do all the work. I don't really need a function call right here and kind of in the middle. I'm going to take that out. I've got main here and that really shouldn't go mixed in with the helper function so I'm going to move it to the bottom. And I'm not sure if this is the bottom yet but we'll move it there take a look at all these other functions going on. I've got a lot of space here. You see I was like, oh I think my program's finished. Scroll down. Nope. So let's take out all these extra blank lines. They are not going to help the readability. One blank line. 
Okay. I am grouping them together. We'll see if we can improve this even a little bit more. And then I've also got some things down here that are functions, so they go at the very bottom and the main section. Okay. So I've got my sections organized. Everything is grouped together, but let's check out my blank lines. So I know at the top I was doing a pretty good job. Let's check it. You see how it's all kind of garbledy together? It's really hard to tell where one begins and another ends. So another thing right here. It kind of looked like one function, and maybe I just didn't indent correctly. Now these blank lines, I've got too many blank lines here. Don't need that extra one. Take out. Let's just kind of fix things up. Now that I've got it all kind of organized, you can see this one, even though it is a helper function, it really doesn't quite belong here because all the other ones are working with for loops and this one is working with my canvas. So if I want to group things together, I might keep it still in my helper function, but I'm going to move it near the bottom. And that's going to look a little bit better. Now I do have my main function here. I can put a comment here for main function. It's kind of self-explanatory, but it doesn't hurt. I've got my handler to draw on the canvas. I've kind of got that as its own little section, so that's all nice and neat. I've got my blank line separating. And here I have my main. So this is my main code right here. This is where all the work is actually going to happen. And I did include some lines of code to work with simple GUI. So all these frames, there's really no sense in having them separated. It does not help in the readability. So I'm going to kind of group them together. And it doesn't really help to have that separated either. Now I might put a blank line there because these are all my buttons. And then these are the actual uh, methods that do all the work, the calls. Now let's take a look. Remember where we started from. Everything's organized nice and neat. If I was going to grade this for programming style, it would get full points now. You can run it. And this is actually the for loops practice program with all the challenges done. So if I want to count by one, I'm going to count up to, let's count up to 18. And there it is. I want to count by two. Okay, count down. I'm going to start with eight. And so on and so forth. So if you want to do the entire challenge, you can see what the output might look like. Now, whenever you're doing working on your programs, think about good programming style tips, especially when it comes to assessment, because usually that is part of the grade.